Hello, my name is M.K. Davis. What you're looking at is a colorized version of of uh, an animal called a thylacine. Uh, thylacines were found in the, on the island of Tasmania and are now considered to be extinct. And this is one of the reasons why uh, it's extinct, um, or is considered to be extinct, is that it killed a lot of livestock. Livestock, poultry, it, it, it clashed with people and and with people's means of making a living. Uh, and this was an animal that was hunted uh, to extinction. And uh, at one time they were sort of blaming the extinction on diseases, but now they've sort of uh, uh, recognized that it, the disease had very little to do with anything. It was it was the, they were hunted to extinction. At first glance, now, a thylacine appears very dog-like. Uh, and, you know, it can be mistaken for a dog, but it's it's anything but a dog. Uh, and I'll show you some reasons why. I have a, some footage of some thylacines that were in captivity uh, in the Hobart Zoo there in Tasmania. And the last one died, I think, in... 1936 uh, so we had this footage that uh, we can refer back to let me uh, just keep it on the small screen for a while and maybe we'll you know uh, go full screen here in a little bit but I, I want to kind of keep control of it with my with my uh, jogger Okay, let's just kind of watch these, just a little bit of this footage. And let's just go slowly. Some of it is of higher quality, some of it is lesser quality. And I want to point out a few things to you, and that, that's why uh, this, watch the ear of this thing move. I mean, this footage is extraordinary for, for its age. Hold it. Move too far. Okay, let me go back. This thing jumps on me. Wow. When I go too far to the right with my jogger, it'll jump on me. Now let's try it again. There we go. There's the part where it's moving its ear. Look at the subtleties. Take a look at this. You recognize right there, you're not looking at a dog. And you're not looking at a cat, even though it's called the Tasmanian Tiger. It's, it's neither dog nor cat. Uh, it's a ferocious predator. And it's got those ears and all those senses working all the time, even in captivity there. Now, I don't want to go too far to the right and lose my spot again, so let me just be very careful about advancing this. Because it's a, it's a pretty good size piece of footage. There we go. This is what I want to get to right here. You know, take a look right there. You know you're not looking at a dog. Let me just kind of zoom in on it right there. I don't want it to fuzz out on me. But look at the posture right there. The tail is on the ground. It's standing flat-footed. Look at the feet. And that's what they call a plantigrade foot. A plantigrade foot simply puts the entire surface of the foot on the ground. 
and, and an animal that has a plantigrade foot can stand on its hind legs and uh, can even walk on its hind legs. It appears to even have knees right there. Look at the knees. See how it lets the arms, the front arms hang down. Um, let's watch that, watch that in action again. very most unusual animal and the reason I keep pointing this out that you're not looking at a dog because it's easy to you know in your mind rationalize what you're looking at as something you know you're familiar with but look at look at the physique of this thing now let's go look at the foot right here right here see right here Watch it go completely flat. Look at this. Tail on the ground. They use this tail for balance. The reason why I mention that is because of a, a startling bit of information about the thylacine. This, uh, thylacines, this was said to be the last living thylacine. But the question is, you know, is it? And people have made, you know, some really good efforts at locating uh, thylacines in Tasmania and on the mainland of Australia. Even though they say they see them on Australia, they're not supposed to have existed there for 3,000 years. So what are they seeing? Um, and why would they be seeing it on the mainland, uh, where, which, which it has not been on? in so long well yeah uh, this goes back to this information that it appears that there was a an, a society of people or an organization of people dedicated to the preservation of the thylacine as the numbers began to dwindle they began to capture animals and export them and they had a book that somebody discovered where they had been uh, exporting these animals allegedly to the mainland of Australia. But my point is that once you put an animal like this on a boat and you ship it off the island that it lives on uh, of Tasmania, you don't know where it went for sure. And uh, it's uh, always possible if you're trying to, you're trying to preserve an animal that at that time your 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 country wants to be gone. They're they're systematically rubbing out this animal, uh, driving it to extinction. They don't want them, and they don't want them on the mainland either. The same the same people the same situation would exist there as exists on. Tasmania, these things kill a lot of livestock. And it would be kind of foolish to take them away from one situation and put them in another situation just like it if you're trying to preserve them. So my, my idea, and this is just a thought of mine, but you know, it's a theory of mine, is that that book was a diversion and that the actual the actual delivery of thylacines occurred in some places unrecorded and so that they could get a, a new start in a new place without hunting pressure without people trying to exterminate them and it was this was a they were they were paying for pelts I mean you turn them in a thylacine pelt and you got a bounty there were bounties on them and that's why they were rubbed out and you want to put them in a place where there's no bounties on them. And uh, the reason why I think that this occurred is because beginning in Puerto Rico and then eventually uh, through various islands of the Caribbean, over to Mexico, up to the southern portion of the United States along the Gulf Coastal regions, 
there began to be reports of an animal that could jump on its up on its hind legs and actually stand on its hind legs and it, it would rip apart uh, livestock and it, it was such a, a tremendous killer of livestock that that it would there would be no blood left in the animal and and they had nobody had ever seen an animal like this before they said it hopped around like a on its hind legs like a kangaroo but then it could get down on all fours and uh, they, they began to call it the goat sucker uh, because of its ability to bleed out an animal and they call it a uh, in Spanish chuca chupacabra uh, which means simply goat sucker. And my question is that because the, there was an effort to export these animals off the island of Tasmania by ship, is it possible that this may be the goat sucker? Right here. Uh, let's take a look. Can get up on its hind legs. Plantigrade grade foot. Look at the plantigrade grade foot. Watch the undu undulation of the of the the spinal areas of this this animal. Well, this is not the piece right here, but let's just watch this. You may be watching the goat sucker, the real goat sucker in action here uh, and that's kind of my thoughts it's, it's a theory of mine let's see now what this is the one I was telling you about the undulation of the spine you know you're not looking at a dog when you see this look, look at look at his look at his feet flat on the ground look at the the extreme curve of the spine. You know, tail on the ground is balance. Look at the front feet, the claws. You know, this is a track, this would leave a track like the chupacabra. Now let me just go to another. Let's back off here. Let me just see what I can see here. Now, now, this was taken from a, a documentary on the thylacine um, called Animal X, and it you know it was a, a documentary series that considered a lot of a lot of cryptid animals, and this was a cast of a thylacine rear foot, and you see that it has a paw, just sort of zoom in on it it has a paw front paw like a like a sort of like a dog's but it's got this plantigrade foot so that when it stands flat on the ground it'll leave this long skinny portion back portion of the foot and that's what people were seeing when the they were saying they were seeing chupacabras or goat suckers that they would have leave a track that looked like a dog but it had a a, a rear portion uh, of of to the track. Now let's just see what we got here. And they say that this is a possible thylacine rear foot right here in the sand. Uh, that somebody said that they had seen a thylacine, and that this this was left behind. Okay. Now let's go to another one. This is a cast of a thylacine front foot. And, and at first it looks kind of like a dog, but then you realize that it's not a dog. Uh, not, there are differences. Um, now let's go... 
to something very interesting right here. All right. Not sure if I can get it all in here. Let me, let me reduce the size. Okay, you're going to see this. Look at this footprint right here. It's, uh, what is it? Uh, five and a half, five and three quarter inches long. It's nearly six inches long. See, it's got the toes and then a long rear portion. That was found in Louisiana. Uh, I got another version of it. Hold on. Maybe a little easier to see. Now, the folks who found this didn't really understand what they were looking at, but there have been reports in the southern United States of an animal, a chupacabra-like animal, that uh, that killed in a similar manner as the uh, thylacine. Uh, and they were they were called by the witness kangaroo-like. They were they hopped like a kangaroo. Well, you know, a thylacine is not a kangaroo. But it is similar to a kangaroo in some ways. We'll go back to the footage here. Now watch, look at the... Watch the, the, the size of the gate of the mouth. Well, let me get over on it. I'm sorry, I'm not on it. All right, let's do that. You see why this would be a candidate for the goat sucker. Look at the weapons that this animal possesses. Anything open their mouth this far, and every one of these teeth will cut. Every one of them. You see why the people wanted them dead uh, on the island of Tasmania. If you're trying to raise sheep, if you're trying to raise poultry, any type of livestock, this is one of your worst nightmares. Yeah, it, at first it looks like a dog, but look at the head. It's not a dog. It's not a canine. It won't you, it won't crossbreed with canines and produce puppies. It, it, it's not a canine at all. And it's not a cat. It's not a wolf. People try to reconcile this animal with known names. It's called the Tasmanian tiger. It's called the Tasmanian wolf. It's even called the dog-headed possum because it's marsupial. It carries its young in a pouch. But its closest relative is a kangaroo. But it's not really a roo either. Maybe it's the goat sucker. Who knows? Let's see here. Went too far again. Let me see. All right. Here we go. Planty grade feet. Flat on the ground is back feet. Okay. You see those distinctive stripes. That's why they call it the tiger. But 
this has this is the posture that if you look up goat sucker, you look up chupacabra, that they'll say people see these the chupacabra doing is standing on its hind legs with this awkward hop, then getting back down on all fours and laying waste to a whole ch- barnyard of chickens, uh, which is what you see right here. So, if these people were trying to preserve the thylacine by clandestinely sending them off to various locations throughout the world in the in the warmer climates uh, of the Caribbean, Mexico, uh, and the other islands down there, and then southern tier of the United States, and and creating a book. That, that seems to have them going to the mainland. I could see that. I can see that. That's how you would do it. You would not want to point anyone to where you let them off. And until their numbers could come back, and if and if they if there was an animal like this one in Puerto Rico, it would fit the description they give of a chupacabra or goat sucker and uh, that's my theory Could this be the goat sucker? You be the judge. I thank you for your time.